everybody in today's guide i want to talk about d5 2.9's enhanced ai post-processing tool called post ai what they've done in 2.9 is they've actually improved the ai enhancer and added style transfers so what that means is you can take a realistic rendering like this turn it into a stylized rendering like this so let me show you how to get started so once you create a rendering you're going to see this guy right here AI post-processing. Once you click this, it's going to activate post AI. You can also get it from this button right here. The same exact thing. I like to do it after I create the rendering. That way I have something, right? So once I have that, this is my base rendering. I can go over here. I can do a regular AI enhancer, which is just going to improve the details of the rendering. It's going to make foliage look much better, make people look realistic and bring out the materials and details a little bit more. So it feels more photorealistic. So I'm going to click this and I'll show you what happens. Here, you can choose areas of your image to be enhanced. So why is this important? Let's say there's a portion of your design or project you don't want AI to touch because maybe it'll distort it a bit, it'll change it a little bit too much. That's what this is gonna let you do. You can actually tell it which areas that you want to be picked up. So I'll show you how that works right now. So now you see, as I hover over faces of my project, it's actually coming up as a selection. So if I want to just like enhance the tree, I would click this and now that's part of the mask. So this is really nice because I could ignore the building altogether and just worry about the vegetation, the atmosphere and the sky. Super cool. You could also click minus and remove from your mask. So let's say you had a bunch of things selected. You can easily just go and erase it. So that's what that one does right down here. Enhancement weight. This is basically the strength that you want it to enhance the image. The higher it is, the more creative it'll be. So it'll start adding more details. It'll change, a, I don't wanna say like a lot, but it will start to change more of your rendering than you'd probably want. So I think 0.7 is probably the highest you would go. And here it's even saying that it's that strong. I think 0.5 to 0.7, totally fine. Normal is just like a nice subtle upscale. It's not gonna make anything look too crazy. It's just almost like a simple polish pass. So I'll do it at 0.7 just so you could see what happens. And we'll do a little comparison. So I'm gonna click AI Enhancer. And now it's added to my queue. And what's nice about this is I can actually go back here and I can continue working. So if I want, I could do a 0.3 just to show you the high and the low. If I do that, look at that. So now I've got one here that's working and now I've got a new one. So now that these are baked, let me show you. This is our 0.7 and I'm going to zoom in right down here and you could see, look at the detail that it's adding to the rocks, right? And then even here, you see that how it added like a better transition here. So overall it's enhancing the materials. So this is why I'm saying 0.7 is probably the furthest I'd go. It's adding a lot of, you know, details and everything. And it looks fantastic. I'm not saying it's not, but any further than that, it might be a little, a little too crispy. Um, so you can see before and after, and now let's switch to the 0.3 version and we'll zoom in here and you can see not as much. It's just like a subtle addition of detail. It didn't make that look as good as before. And if we look here, you know, the concrete's looking a little bit better. It's not as drastic as this. So again, really depends on how far you want to crank this, right? If you need, you know, more, more assistance, then, then go for that. If not, these are totally fine. So maybe 0.5 is really the, the answer or the sweet spot for you. So I highly recommend playing around with it, but the point is this thing is phenomenal. It's an easy, quick, cheap way to just enhance your image. Um, you know, I was using Magnific before and it was 40 bucks a month, but this is, this is free. This is built into my uh, pro subscription. So why not? Right. And it just makes the images look better. And to th kind of think about this a little bit in the terms of like production and creating images, right? We want to present the best kind of image possible, but we also need to balance our time and effort, right? I can't spend an extra 10 hours to reach this level of fidelity by like tweaking materials, lighting, you know, getting better, higher quality assets. It's just not worth it for me to be able to do this in a minute. That's huge. So why not do this? So definitely start doing this in your workflow. To me, honestly, it feels like a no brainer. So this is the AI enhancer. Let's talk about the style transfer. I'm a big fan of the style transfer. It's basically broken up into two kinds of parameters. You've got stylized. So think of stylized as watercolor, cartoon, pen, pencil sketch, scale model, and marker drawing. 
This is non-realistic. Why would you use this? I highly recommend this. If you don't want to present like a clay render to a client and you want it to be a little bit more charming, I think the watercolor and the marker drawings are fantastic. And I'll show you examples of that in just a second. But then on the flip side, you have the realistic side. You can upload your own style transfer image and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Make it look like a sunset, nighttime view, springtime, winter, and autumn without having to change all your assets and change precipitation settings and everything. So again, we're talking about one click that's able to do all this heavy lifting. So let's process a bunch of these just so you can see what's happening. So I'm gonna go right over here to my settings. It's important to point this out. Style transfer weight. This is basically saying, how much of the style do you want applied? The higher the value, the more it's going to look that way, but it might change some of your details. So I think 0.6 is totally fine. If you think it's doing too much, less than that. If you want more of that look, you can hide in that. And then this one's really important, the structure. How much of your image do you want to retain? Personally, these settings are perfect. I would not change them, but if you're fighting it and things are changing too much, this is how you fix it. So let's process a couple of these. We'll do watercolor. And I'm gonna go back, we'll do cartoon. We'll do pen. And we'll do marker. And you know what, since, since we're here, let's just do the scale model so you could see. Probably wouldn't use all these um, just because, you know, like voxel, do I need it to look like Minecraft? Not really, scale model, not really. So that's why I don't care too much about these. And while that's baking, let's go to here and let's grab my own watercolor reference image. So you can see it right here. And then I'm gonna apply that style transfer. And now I wanna apply some of the more realistic ones. So we'll do sunset. So I purposely chose a view by default that is kind of gloomy, just so you can see what's gonna happen. So I'll hit sunset, we'll transfer this. I'll do night, spring, and we'll do a winter one, just so you can see. So now you can see that my queue is filling up. Look at that, this is my watercolor one. So again, why is this useful? If you don't have everything dialed in and your project's like not ready to show materiality and everything, this is fantastic because you don't need to figure out everything. This is just conveying like a, a look and feel of what the project can be. So the client's more focused on like the form rather than like, oh, this concrete doesn't look right. So that's why stylized renderings, very powerful. So this is our cartoon. So it's kind of got like an anime look to it. So you can see here, you know, something out of like a Ghibli film. So really, really beautiful. Here's our sketch. So you can see it's really, really faithful to the drawing. And like, look, it's even like doing the crosses like architects do, um, but this is like a beautiful drawing. So like, instead of you sitting there and tracing it, you could do that. This is marker, which is actually one of my favorites. I just love the look of this. And this takes forever to manually do. So big fan of this. Another hand drawing one, scale model. So literally like if you were to hand build this, what that would look like. Super cool here. And now we're moving to our realistic ones. So look at this, look at this beautiful stylized image. So I gave it that watercolor image. And so what it did was it didn't take the actual style. It actually took like the environment of it. Um, and it kind of gave it this like soft look. So this is pretty cool. Um, it gives it like a very stylized look. Like I kind of love how dreamy it looks. That's really cool. This is sunset. So it literally changed our light settings. You could see it literally added lighting as well. And like the reflections and everything, super beautiful. This is nighttime. Added interior lights. So again, this is a huge time saver because I didn't have to go in, change all my environment settings. And I got this after just like a minute, but this is winter. So it, instead of me turning on the precipitation, it just added this and it like removed the leaves and everything. That's insane. So those are super cool, super impressive. I'm really happy with them. I'm gonna you know, keep using this as part of my workflow. Let's move on to the next setting. These are effects. I don't recommend using these too much right now. I think like the base post-processing is like fantastic, but you could sharpen it and denoise it directly in here, which is kind of nice, but I like the overall look of it. So I'm not tweaking it too much. Transparency, this is like if you selected different regions and you want them to blend a little bit better, you can do that with this right here. Once you like an image and you have something you really like, you can just go here to download and you'll literally just download this image 
So under task, you can see all the images you generated. And let's say I love all these images. Instead of me clicking one by one, download here and here, and like going to the preview and download, you can actually just go to edit and click this. And this is saved per that image, right? And I can literally just hit download right here and I'll do a bulk download. And I'll have all those images. So now that I have all these saved, I'm going to show you what they look like. If you like this tutorial, please give me a like. If you have a question, drop a comment. And as always, subscribing really helps the channel out. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.